welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all. chosen generation we are the chosen generation we've been called forth to show his excellence all I require for life God has given me and I know who I am I know who God that says I, I am. am what he says I am where he says I'm not I know who I am I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm not, I know who I am. I'm walking in power, I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor, I know who I am. I'm walking in power, I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor, I know who I am. Are chosen we are a chosen generation we've been called for to show his excellence all i require for life god has given me and i know who i am we are chosen we are a chosen generation been called for to show his excellence all i require for life god has given me and i know who i am i know who god says i am what he says i am where he says i'm at i know who i am i know who god says i am what he says i am where he says I'm at, I know who I am. I'm walking in power, I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power, I'm working miracles, I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm not. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm not. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Take a look at me. I'm a wonder. Doesn't matter what.
what you see now. You see his glory. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at, I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at, I know who I am. As we sing this chorus, you know, we hear people say all the time, whose report will you believe? Whose report are you believing today? Right. Are you believing the doctor? Are you believing the people around you? Or are you believing what the word of God says and who you are in Jesus' name? Amen. You are healed. You are whole. Thank you, Lord. You walk in victory all the days of your life. You are blessed. Yes. You are highly favored. Yes. You are the head and not yes. the tail. A child of God. I know who I am. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. I know who I am. I know who God, God says, says I, I am. am. What He says I am. Where He says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What He says I am. Where he says I'm at, I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. Lord. Amen. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are the child of the King. And everything that this book promises is yours. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, Father God that is your desire to bless your children, God, that we would not lack in anything, Father God, that, Lord, that we would walk in blessing, God, that we would walk in healing and anointing and deliverance, free from the power of sin, free from what this world and Satan and sin would want to put on us, God. I pray, Father God, Lord, that you would bless your children this morning, Father God. Set them free, Father God, from everything that, that weighs them down, that burdens them, that keeps them Father God, from living a victorious Christian life, God. I thank you, Father God, Lord, that as they realize that they are your child, God, and they realize the promises of this book, Father God, that they will rise up, Father God, and be all that you've called and created them to be. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. We thank you for it. And we praise you and give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. God is good. God is great. Amen. So glad to have you here this morning. Welcome to New Beginnings Church. We love to praise the Lord. We love to, to lift up the name of Jesus. And if you do not have a home church, we welcome you to, you to be with us. We welcome those that are watching online. We thank you um, for taking time to, to be with us and, and hear the word of God. And, you know, New Beginnings is a great church. Amen. And God is doing great things. Amen. Miracles every day. And I just praise God. I, you know, sometimes you forget you know, what God's done, and then you look back and you say, wow, God, you're amazing. Amen. Um, in the seat in front of you, there's a connect card. 
If this is your first time being here or your first time in a long time, I, I just encourage you to, to fill that out. If your name, or uh, if your name, if your name has changed, if your address has changed or any of your <laughs> information has changed. I don't know. Somebody might have got married. Um, <laughs> Um, would you fill that out? You can hand that, um, put that in the offering, or you can hand that to Pastor Ben or myself um, so that we can properly welcome you or, or know what's going on in your life. That's, there's also an area on the back where you can fill out a testimony and we can praise God with you, or maybe you have a prayer request and, and let us know what's going on in your life and we can agree God to have victory in that area. Um, so glad that you guys are here this morning. God is, is uh, uh, amazing. And, you know, y- y'all are looking pretty good this morning. I'm looking out there. <laughs> At this time, we want to greet each other and say hello. Tell somebody, you look fantastic. Amen. Amen. Well, I know you guys like talking to each other and hanging out together, and you're welcome to do that after the service some more. Don't, don't rush out on Sundays. Hang out after and, and, and hug someone and find out how their week's going and what's going on with them. Um, 
Let me ask you a question. When you're excited about something, what do you do? Clap. Clap. Tell people. Scream. Walk around with a smile. Okay. What do you do? Dance. You dance? Oh, nice. 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 That, that's an old-fashioned term, Jimmy. Most people don't know that. Jimmy said he cuts the rug. <laughs> uh, depends on where you look. Uh, <laughs> amen. But anyway, we got something to be excited about this morning. So when I tell you, if you want to clap, you can clap. If you want to shout, you can shout. If you want to get up and dance, you can get up and dance. All right? Whatever it is you said... I didn't, put it in your, I didn't put words in your mouth. You said what you would do. So you need to get a little excited today because, man, we got something in the mail this week, and I shared it already. If, if you come to Wednesday Bible study, you got like a, an advance notice. So if you want to know what's happening at the church ahead of everybody else, come Wednesday nights because I tell them the stuff ahead of time. And then the guys out at the men's breakfast, they heard it second. So you guys are getting it third, fourth hand. Because Christy and I got it first, then the Bible study, then the men, and you today. But it's still exciting every time I see it. I got two letters in the mail this past week. And they got me so excited. Two letters in the mail that say, at the top of the letter, they say, no delinquent taxes due. (laughs) One for the property next door. One for over here where the parsonage is. What that says is that we, as far as this is concerned, are officially, that's settled. And I know we had said we had settled it last year, but you know how it is. Until you get the letter that says it's settled, it's settled now. What that means is, what that means is why I'm so excited about this. I just want, I want you guys, because look, this, this happened because of you being faithful in your giving. This happened because of God being faithful in what he does. When God says, you know, when we put something in God's hands, God takes what we put in his hands and God can do something with it. So you were faithful. God was faithful. Man, we had some some churches in our section that came alongside us. Over the last 18 months, what this means is that we settled $10,000 in the range of $10,000 in delinquent taxes. What that means is that our churches are going to show up on some auctioneer sheet. What it also means is, and this is what I've been praying, that 2019, we're moving forward. We're moving forward. What can we do in 2019 with $10,000 that we don't have to pay off to the government for back taxes? A whole lot of ministry for the kingdom. So I'm excited, excited, excited to share that with you. Um, If we haven't already done that, we're going to dismiss the kids. You can go downstairs uh, with Pastor Christy and and her crew that are um, with you guys today. So kids, you can head on down. Delante's heading out there with him as well. So again, we have, folks, God is moving. God is doing things. God is at work. I want to remind you of a few things, okay? Just bear with me. First of all, if you took one of these or a couple of these for the Valley Forge students, remember we adopted a dorm, we want to give them notes of encouragement. Uh, There's a box up here at any time over the next week or hopefully in the next week or two you can get those brought in, you can keep drop them in the box. We have a few more that need to go out. So if you want to grab another one or two or five today, uh, by all means grab those. Again, writing notes of encouragement to the dorm that we adopted, it's Wells Uh, The dorm is called Wells, and we have the the upstairs and the downstairs floors. Uh, Those are available. Also, a reminder, Paradigm Youth is this Friday, 7 o'clock. God is doing great things uh, in our students. And with that thought in mind, um, up here on the table as well is um, an article that was written about our youth group for the Assemblies of God National Publication. As many of you know, our district did an article on us, or I wrote an article for our district magazine, which is out on the table out there. Well, the national office saw that article, and they decided they wanted to write an article about our church, our youth group, and what God's doing for for churches all over the United States to see. We're talking 14,000 churches in the Assemblies of God. And they chose to write an article about us, and so we made copies of, of that article. Some of you already saw it online, um, and, but there's hard copies here if you want to grab one and, and read that. Um, God's moving. You know why God's moving? Because we're letting him. Because we're letting him. God is willing and wanting to do and to change people's lives, 
And what he's looking for is people who say, like Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Use me. So copies of that article are there. Also, uh, sign up for the men's and ladies' conferences are, are available. Uh, we have a couple of clipboards here today. When you leave church, um, there will be people out in the lobby if you want to sign up for the men's and ladies' conferences. They also have informational flyers. Youth conventions coming up. We're excited about that um, as well. And that info is out there as well for the teens. And then uh, last but not least in the area of announcements, um, we're going to be running, offering growth tracks again. Remember we talked about back before Christmas about if you want to be involved in ministry here at the church, we want to go take you through a four-week process so you know what we believe, why we believe, why we're all on the same page. This past week, everyone who went through um, received an email, went through before, should have received an email letting you know where you stand. Some of you have to make up some. Um, you didn't do all four. Starting the first Sunday in March, 9 a.m. to 9.45, we're going to start with Growth Track 1 and go for four weeks. So if you haven't been, come. If you missed one, you can make it up during that time. But everyone who's going to be involved in ministry at the church, we need to be on the same page. So we encourage you to come on out and be a part of that. Church, God is moving. He's working. Things are happening, and I am excited, excited, excited about it. Amen? Well, you know what? I talked about the reason those taxes got paid off is because of your faithfulness in God's. And now's that time where we can say to God, you know what, God? We're going to keep putting our trust in you. As we worship now through our giving. Giving says, God, you're my source. And I invest in what you're doing by giving a portion of what you've blessed me with. The tithe, 10%. And then also offerings on top of that, whether it's to missions or, or, or to, to support paradigm or other things. When we partner with God, great things happen. And that's what this time is all about. So let's pray as we worship through our giving. Father, we thank you for your presence. God, I thank you for the, the, the things that you're doing. God, I thank you for, for tax bills that are getting settled. I thank you for, for teens' lives that are being impacted because of the faithfulness of the people of this church to reach this community. God, I thank you for what's happening and what's going to happen. And Lord, as we worship with, through giving, Father, we bring the tithe and we present also with that, God, we bring offerings. Lord, we want to see the, re the devourer rebuked, but we also want to see the windows of heaven continue to be open and blessing to be poured out on this church and its people so that we can be a blessing to those around us. We want to be blessed to be a blessing. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give.
i 
song talks about how the spirit of God is like water to our souls. Do you know what would happen if you tried to go without water? You wouldn't last very long. refreshment of the Holy Spirit. We need that fresh water so that we can stay living. We need to walk in the Holy Spirit and stay in step with Him. Amen. Let's just sing your name is like honey on my lips one more time. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, God. And we give you all the glory in this place. In Jesus' name.
Jesus, your name is power, breath in living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the moment to adore him. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, you're so worthy. and you've got something that's that right now seems like an obstacle in your life seems like a giant something standing in your way something keeping you from just taking the next step that you know God wants you to take right now I want you to you know we, we spend a lot of time talking about the thing but right now, I just want you to begin to just praise the name of Jesus because it's that name that's above every other name. So if it's, if whatever the situation is, just begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus to see breakthrough. Father, we pray right now in the name that's above every other name, that name, that Jesus, that name. God, we pray, God, for breakthrough, Father. God, we pray for victories to be won for testimonies, God, to, to come to fruition, Father. Answered prayer. The lost ones that we've been on our knees for interceding, God, we're praying for salvation, Father. God, for that financial problem, Lord God, that we don't see an answer to. We pray provision, God. We've already testified today how you've provided for us as a church. Oh, God, you're ready to move, God. We pray provision. God, I pray for marriages that we know of that are, that are being attacked, that are being undermined. God, you, you designed marriage. You created it. It's, it's, you, just, you wanted it to be the way it is, described in your word. One man and one woman for life. And God, our culture, God, is, 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 is a, it's under attack in our culture. But God, I pray for marriages right now. Strengthen our marriages. Restore marriages. Bring healing to, the, to our marriages, Father. I pray that right now, Father. Oh, the Jesus, that name that's above every other name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 You know, I know there are some people here today that are dealing with some health concerns, personal or, or within their family. And if that's you, I want you to just lift your hands right now where you are. Just lift your hands right now. If that's you, you've got an issue, a health concern, you, a family, I want you to lift your hands. 
And I want, to, I want you to begin to pray. I want you to begin to pray and begin to believe God for, for healing. I want you to begin to believe God to, to bring you through. I want you to begin to pray and, believe, and, and ask God for victory. Because your prayers are just as powerful as mine. The words that come out of your lips reach God's throne just as quickly as anyone else's. Oh, hallelujah. Right now, Father, all across this room, I pray peace. Lord, I know there are some in this room, God, or they're, getting, they're going to be do, going through some procedures, them or a family member in this week. God, I pray peace. I pray peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, there are those in this room, God, that are, that are just leaning an, an answer. Healing. I pray healing. Victory. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Let's just, Lord, let the church, let's thank them the way we thank them about those, those tax bills being settled. Let's thank them in advance for what's going to be settled. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you for what's going to be done, for what's going to be settled, for the testimonies that are coming. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Look at somebody and say, the answer is coming. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The answer's coming, church. The answer's coming. Because we don't serve a God who lies, and we don't serve a God who, who pulls a bait and switch on you. If he said it, he'll do it. And so we, 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 we rejoice that the answer is coming. God is good. Amen. God is great. I got to keep reminding myself. That's the new one. God is great. February. It's so hard to believe it's almost the end of February. One more week and one more Sunday in February after this. It's like, man. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful because hopefully March means nicer weather, warmer weather. They're able to get outside and, and, and run around with the kids and do things like that. But we're not there yet. Somebody told me there was supposed to be snow this weekend. Um, I was like, I didn't hear that. I rebuked that. <laughs> what was that? I know. But where, stranger, stranger things have happened. Anyway, we've got two more weeks in, in February. This week and next week. And we've got two more weeks in our series called Choose. And we've been talking about this idea of choose and this, 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 this understanding that if we want to see certain things happen in our lives, we've got to make the right choices. I've joked before, you know, if, if you want to have that, that beach body come June and July, that beach body in June and July is going to come about because of choices that you're making in January and February. Now, if you don't care about that, no. No, nope. God said he turns you over to your desires. But if you want, if you want to have that beach body, if you want to, if you want to, you want to have, you know, if students, if you want to end that semester with a good GPA, the decisions you're making now are going to influence what happens later on in, in, in the year. I remember when I was a teacher, so many times, you know, we'd get down to like May and kids all of a sudden woke up and realized the, season, the school year is coming to an end. And I've messed around for seven months. And they'd come run, Mr. Rivera, can I get some extra credit? Mr. Rivera, what, is there any extra credit I could do? Is there, and I was like, no, because you know what extra credit means? More work for me. Because if I give you extra credit, then that means you're going to turn something back into me that I've got to look at and grade. And you know what? I've worked all year. You didn't take advantage of that. You didn't plan ahead. Well, your crisis is not my problem. 
And so I would tell the kids, you know, you, ch- you made choices all along. It's not my job to change that now. Now, thankfully, God's not as mean as I was. God is somewhat is a lot more patient than I was oftentimes with my students, but the same t- things are, apply to us, that the choices we make today are going to impact our tomorrows. And we talk, we've been talking about choose, and we talked about, you know, choosing life, and we talked about choosing a power and authority, and we talked about, you know, choosing relationships, and today we're going to talk about choosing love. Ties right in, huh? Did you all have a good Valentine's Day? If you didn't, there's a couple of cakes out there with hearts on them, all right? First, when I, when I start praying at the end of service, today and today only, if you're in the doghouse because you didn't do something on Valentine's Day, feel free to sneak out and grab one of those cakes, okay? Um, that doesn't mean that, that your loved one is going to accept it, but they're there. But we're going to talk about choose love. And again, it's been a few weeks since we started this series called Choose, and we know that life, again, is full of choices, You made choices this morning. You made choices yesterday. You're going to make choices tomorrow. And there's big choices and there's little choices. You know, a big choice, uh, you know, is for for those of you that are that are you know the younger ones and single. You know, if 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 you plan on getting married someday, a big choice: who I'm going to marry. That's a big choice. You know, for those of you that are that are that are are a little older, you know, a big choice might be you know um, you know. what, what, where you're going to invest your retirement funds. That could be a big choice. There's, there's all kinds of choices we make. Personal choices and choices that affect those around us. And even in the Bible, God told the people over and over that they had choices to make. Joshua chapter 24, 15. I'm going to go through some verses real quick here talking about choices. So if you don't turn to them fast enough, you can at least jot them down. Joshua 24, 15 which is where we started this whole series. It says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. The gods of your ancestors, or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua told the people of Israel, make a choice. Choose who you're going to serve. And that choice had long-term effects and ramifications for those people, just like it does for us today. Proverbs 8, chapter 8, verse 10. Another verse that talks about choose. It says, choose my instruction rather than silver and knowledge rather than pure gold. Another choice we have to make. Are we going to choose God's word and what God's word says? Or are we going to choose silver and gold? Now, here's the thing. Oftentimes, when we choose to obey God and his word, God takes care of all the other stuff. We know that verse, right? Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he takes care of the other stuff. There's other areas that we don't have to stress about and worry about. Proverbs 22, verse 1, choose a good reputation over riches. Being held in high esteem is better than silver and gold. Again, making a choice, what kind of life you're going to live. Jeremiah 38, verse 20, Jeremiah replied, he says, you want, again, these are all in a context that that I'm not getting into right now, so I encourage you, go back, read the chapters, understand the backstories. But this is just showing all the different times God presented people with a, a moment of choice. Jeremiah replied in Jeremiah 38, 20, he said, you won't be handed over to them if you choose to obey the Lord. Your life will be spared and all will go well with you. Now, we're not reading the whole chapter, but you can get get an idea there of what the choice is. The choice is obey God and you won't be handed over to them. So obviously there's someone looking to get their hands on these people to do some harm to them. And, And Jeremiah says, your choice is going to dictate what happens to you. And then Romans chapter 6, verse 16 it says, don't you realize that you become the slave to whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Boy, it doesn't get any clearer than that, does it? 
It doesn't get any clearer than that right there. For all the people you've ever met, and maybe you're in that category, maybe you were in that category, complaining about your life and the, tur- the turns and the, th- the struggles you've had in your life, and, and then you-, you read a verse like this and you realize, wow, I, I, had, a- I had a say in that. Choose You will become a slave of whatever you choose to obey. You could be a slave to sin, which leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. And I'm telling you today, and I'm telling you every time we've come together over the last several weeks, that there are choices to be made, and the choices we make impact the life we live. Now, again, there's a lot of choices, and they all impact our lives in different ways. Choose to ignore God's wisdom, and there's consequences. And you know what the crazy thing is? That, that over the centuries, how many times that science and culture took, took so long, how, how many times took science and culture years, if not centuries, to catch up to what God's word already said? We think we know better. And yet time and time again, culture came, has come to places in science and in medicine where they looked at God's word and said, man, if we'd only listen to God's word, how different our lives could have been. Choose to ignore God's wisdom, and there's consequences. Choose to obey it, and there's blessing. Now, I want you to turn to Colossians chapter 3. Because today we're going to look at, cho- at the choices we have to make concerning love. Choose love. Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 12. Colossians 3, verse 12. Since God, what's the word? Love. Chose. Since God chose, maybe a different version, New Living Translation. Since God chose you, who did God choose? Say me. Say God chose me. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Verse 13, make allowance for each other's fault and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. So we're talking about choosing, and we're talking about love this morning. We're talking about the the fact that we have to choose love. And we need to know, first of all, that God chose to love you. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? Yet there are so many people in our world today that don't know that simple truth, that God chose to love you. Where you were, where you are, God made a choice. But we've got to understand that, that, that love is a two-way street. Verse 12 of Colossians, it says, God chose you, again, to be his holy people. But church, we need to understand we need to choose to receive and accept God's love. You know, Alexa mentioned this morning about water and, and, and drinking water. And, and she said that, I was like, man, I'm thirsty. <laughs> and so I had Joshua run downstairs and, and, and grab me a bottle of water. And he brought it up. And, you know, when he handed me that bottle of water, I had a choice to make. What was my choice? To drink or not to drink? It's not deep. It's not profound. But it's it's still a choice. And we have that same choice that that this this bottle of water was was presented to me, and I had to choose to drink or not to drink. And we know that God's love has been extended to us, and we have to choose to accept or not accept that love. We know what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved and he gave. We're good, right? Stop right, period, done, game over, end of story. We're good to go. Not really. Because there's more to the verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God said, I love them so much that I'm going to choose to give the best that I have. But then the rest of that verse says that whosoever or whoever believes or chooses 
to have a relationship with him. Whosoever believes him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, God said, here you go. I choose you because I love you. I choose to send my son. I choose to give you the best that I have. And then the, the question falls to every single individual, man, woman, and child that draws breath. Will you choose to respond to his action? Again, we know that God sent his son. But there's a need for it. There has to be a moment where we accept being loved. We have to believe and we have to receive, and we have to surrender ourselves to him. Look, you may be sitting here, you may be watching online, and you may feel unlovable. Anybody ever feel unlovable at, every, at some point in their life? I know I did. I know there's times I do. Maybe you're sitting here, you're watching online, and, and maybe you've done things that are unlovable. Anybody ever done something that was unlovable or made you unlovable? Words, deeds, actions. Even maybe it's something you didn't do. You know you should have, but you didn't for some reason. Maybe you're here and someone told you you're unlovable. Anybody ever been there? Where someone just looked at you, maybe through their actions, they said, you, you're not worth my affection. You're not worth my love. You're not worth my time. I want you to know this morning that God says you are loved. Regardless of where you've been and, or where you are, regardless of what you've done, or didn't do that you should have done, regardless of what people have said about you through their words or their actions, I want you to know this morning that you are loved. You are loved. You are worth loving so much so that as we said before in John 3, 16, God gave the very best that he had. He did not hold back, not even his own son, because of his love for you. That's powerful, church. That's the life-changing message of the gospel. That's the thing that, 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 sets, that, that sets Christianity apart from everybody else. Everybody else says, do, do, do. Work, work, work. And God says, I love you so much that I'm the one who will do. I'm the one who will send. Uh, Jesus says, I'm the one who will go. I'm the one who will sacrifice. And all you have to do is receive what I've provided. We need to choose love. See, loving others is about so much more than our most recent holiday makes it out to be. Some people might call me a Grinch, but I'm not, I'm not a huge proponent or fan of Valentine's Day. Amen. <laughs> I, love the, I love the tradition my mother-in-law and father-in-law started. I love them. They're the best. Days, things like this, they'll go to the store and they'll go to the card aisle, and they'll look around, and they'll look at a card, and it's like, if I was going to buy a card, this is the one I would buy you. <laughs> and then they read the card. Oh, that's so sweet. They put, it, they put it back in the thing, and they take the $10 they would have spent on those two cards, and they go in to do something with each other and spend time with each other. I, listen, if, if you want to steal that, go for it. Just make, sure, just make sure that the other person in your life is on board with that, okay? But I love that idea. This, if, it, I, if this is what I was going to, this would be it. See, the, the, it's, love is more than just a car. It's more than chocolates and flowers. It's more than, than cards and balloons that you give once a year to a selected person. Imagine if God handled love that way. Imagine if there was only select people who would be showered with gifts at specific times of the year. Imagine if that's how God's love worked. Well, I like you this year. Because, listen, over the years, there have been, you know, I've only been married to one woman. But over the years, there have been other people that have captured my heart. As a 10-year-old kid in the fourth grade, that girl who sat across the aisle. You know, and, I, and I, you know, I wrote her a little note, you know, Valentine's Day. You know, you give it to Valentine's Day, and you get a little older, and, you, you know, you're in junior high and high school, and you, maybe you buy the girl flowers, or, or you give, you know, you give them some candy, and, you know, you know, Man, I wish I had all that money back. I wish I had it all back. Not that they were bad people, but it was an investment in something where there was no return, really. I wish I had all that money back. But imagine if God was that way. Imagine if God who picked only select people at specific times of the year to shower with, his, with, with tokens of his love and affection. 
What a terrible experience this would be. But God doesn't work that way. God loves us and pours out his love on us for everyone every single day. That's the way that God loves. And God has called us to love as he loves and to receive his love. I want you to know today, God doesn't love you because of what you've done for him. God doesn't love you because of what your name is. God doesn't love you because of any reason except that he created you, that you're his, and he wants to have a relationship with you. So we need to choose to respond to God's love. God has called us to love, and again, he loves us. And his love is described again in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, when it said what our response needs to be, clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds all of us together in perfect harmony. That was Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14 again. See, that's the kind of love we need to choose to walk in. First things first, and I'm going to just kind of reiterate this. We need to choose to receive God's love. He extended it, receive it this morning. Secondly, we need to choose how we're going to love each other, how we're going to treat each other, how we're going to respond to each other. Those verses there are filled with all kinds of direction on how we're supposed to love and how we're supposed to treat each other. John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Uh, let Let me back up. I got ahead of myself there. Back to Colossians chapter 3. When we talk about love within the church, here's a good guideline of how we're supposed to love and how we're supposed to choose to love one another within the church. It says, treat each other with kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And this is the part I really want us to focus on this morning because, man, church, I'm going to tell you what. As we move forward, we need to let this be our, 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 the hallmark of who we are. Make allowance for each other's faults. What does that mean? Be patient with each other. Am I perfect? No. Are you perfect? No. If you think you are, just give me two minutes alone with your kids, and I'll find out how perfect you're not. (laughs) Same thing goes for me. Same thing goes for me. I'm not perfect. But it says that as we choose to walk in love, first that love that was extended to us that we now extend to each other, as we choose to walk in love, we make allowance for each other's faults. That means there's going to be hiccups. That means there's going to be bumps in the road. That means there's going to be times where we don't see things the same exact way, but we're still going to walk in love because we know that even though we don't see see things the same exact way, doesn't mean that you and I are any less worthy of being loved and loving. Make allowance for each other's faults. I'm going to tell you this right now, church, as we move forward into 2019. That's going to be powerful for us. That's a powerful, that's going to be, that's going to be paramount. That's going to be a key for us. Because when you start new things, new ministry... When people start getting involved in areas that they weren't involved before, you know what's going to happen? Things are not going to go smooth all the time. You're going to step up and you're going to say, I want to help and I want to do something. And and, and, and I may not explain it the best way. And then you have a choice. And I have a choice. My choice is, do I get mad at you because you didn't do it the way I wanted And you have a choice. You're going to get mad at me because I didn't explain it clear enough. Or the third choice is, are we going to be patient with each other and work it out for for God's glory to see lives changed and transformed? Make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. I don't like that one. I'm on an iPad right now, so I can't cross that out. No, but none of us can because it's in the word. We don't get to pick and choose. 
So if someone offends you, you know what it says to do? Forgive. And that's how we see growth and maturity take place in the individuals and in the body of Christ. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all else, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. If you remember a couple of months back, we did a series called Common Denominators, and we talked about 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which is the love chapter. And one of the things I told you to, you know, to do, which is a kind of a neat exercise, is in that chapter where it talks about what love is. It says love is patient, love is kind. It, casts, it, it keeps no, no, no record of wrongs. I said, wherever it says love, put your name in there as you read those verses. And then start asking yourself, am I living out what love is in my life? Am I patient? Am I kind? Am I long-suffering? Man, this verse here says, above all else, clothe yourselves with love. So we need to start living out those things as a church in, in, in ways like we've never done before. I'm not saying we haven't. I'm just saying we need to be mindful of doing it even more. We need to choose love. When something goes wrong, I choose to respond in love. When something doesn't go my way, I choose to be patient and see how this is going to play out and do what I can to make the situation better. I choose love. See, that's the kind of love we need to have for each other, the kind of love that Jesus uh, was talking about when he said, and now John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. He says, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Remember they had all these commandments in the Old Testament? They had the commandments, the Ten Commandments that Moses came down from the mountain with and presented to them. And then over the course of history, through the Old Testament with the rabbis and the Jewish leaders, those Ten Commandments and, and, and the things that God had laid out that grew into, into an even bigger list because people kept adding things to it. Jesus takes this and see, he kind of simplifies it. He says, I give me, I'm giving you a new commandment. A simpler one, if you will, in that it's shorter but more challenging. And the new commandment is love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. The same way God reached out to us, no strings attached. Remember John 3, 16, that we, you know, what, we, what we, we talk about is kind of the, the key verse, the key gospel verse for so many people. It doesn't start out with you do, then I do. It starts out with God did. For God so loved the world, he gave. And if we're going to love the way God loved, if we're going to love each other the way God loved us, if we're going to follow this new commandment, then that means we're going to take the first steps in loving relationships. We're not going to sit back and say, well, it's up to them to make the first move. It's up to them to come say they're sorry. It's up to them to make things right. If we're going to walk in the kind of love that God walks in, if we're going to choose to love the way that God loved, there are going to be plenty of times where we're going to take that first step and we're going to seek reconciliation. We're going to seek healing. We're going to seek breakthrough. We're going to seek God's will be done and the devil kicked out of where he doesn't belong. And that's the middle of our relationships. He goes on to say, for your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. <laughs> They're okay. <laughs> they often like, is it okay? They're fine. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you're my disciples. The world's looking for a true expression of love. The church is supposed to have that answer for the world. But when we don't function and when we don't treat each other with love, then the world walks in our doors and they see dysfunction and they see anger and they see factions and they see sides and they see problems and they see walls and they say, well, if this is what God's all about, then I don't want to be any part of that. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. I've joked, I've said this to people since I've got here. I said, I've said this to people before I got here. When you go to church with people, you're not always going to be 
best friends with everyone. That doesn't mean that you hate each other, but you're not going to be best friends with everyone. But we should have the kind of relationship with each other, and I've said this before, that when we see each other outside of church, we don't hide from each other. That our relationship should be of, the, the, of, of, the, of a nature that when we run into each other in Walmart or Costco, you're not ducking behind a clothing rack. I'm not acting like I'm suddenly really interested in the frozen foods that are in front of me at the expense of not seeing you. You ever see someone do that? Did anyone ever do that to you? You see them and the, you, you, you go down there and you're like, you see them and all of a sudden you're like, oh, and they're like, you know, head stuck in the freezer. Like they can't decide which french fries to buy or something. I want to walk in love. That no matter where I go, no matter where I am, if I come across another person who's the disciple of Jesus Christ, we can talk, we can, we can, we can share what's happening in our lives, we can, we can pray for each other if need be, we can love each other. And let the world know that we're his disciples by the love that we have one for another. So church, we need to be loved. Amen? I, I don't know about you, I do. I thank God loves me. I thank God, God loves me. We need to love others. And that's a choice. We need to choose to love others. And finally, and this is going to come as a surprise to some, but I was just putting it together, God just spoke to us tomorrow, he says, you need to share this with them. We need to choose to love God. We need to choose to love God. And some people are like, I love God. Well, and I'm going to give you a couple of verses that are the litmus test as to whether or not you love God. Because it's clearly laid out in the Bible how we love God. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, obey my commandments. See, coming to church isn't enough to, 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 to prove your love for God. Having a bumper sticker on your car that says, honk if you love Jesus, isn't enough to prove your love for God. Having Bibles laid out all over your house, and we've got a lot of Bibles in this country. But having Bibles laid out all over your house isn't enough to prove you love God. Wearing Christian t-shirts, going to youth group, helping in ministry isn't enough to prove you love God. If you love me, he says, obey my commandments. Obey my commandments. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and, re and reveal myself to each of them. There's a choice that we have to make to love God. And loving God means obeying his commandments. If we, if we choose to love God, then we accept and live by his word. Whatever that means, that's loving God. Loving God is nothing else that, that we want to make it or try to make it. Loving God is simply knowing his word and obeying his word. That's how we prove we love God. There's a second portion of scripture where God talks about loving him. So we need to obey his commandments. The second one is John chapter 21, verse 15 through 17. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Do you love me? He's asking the question, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. And here's the thing about Jesus. Very clear statement by Peter. You know I love you. And Jesus says, if you love me, then feed my lambs. 
Verse 16, Jesus repeated the question. Now, first of all, does Jesus have a memory problem? Okay. Does Jesus have a hearing problem? No. So the first time he asked Peter the question, do you love me? And Peter says, you know I love you. And Jesus answers, then feed my lambs. Why does he do it again? Because he's trying to drive a point home. See, so often in Scripture, when something is repeated, is because that point is a point that they're looking to. You do, we do this with our own families, with our own kids, with our own coworkers and employees. We'll repeat something that's really important. Don't forget. Remember. Write it down. Put it in your phone. Tie a string around your finger. Whatever it takes, you can't forget this. And so when Jesus is having this conversation, it's not that he forgot what Peter said. It's not that he didn't hear him. He wants to make sure that Peter understands and we understand the importance of what he's saying. Verse 16, Jesus repeated the question. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know I love you. You can almost hear Peter, the exasperation building in Peter. Yes, like, like what's going on here? You know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time, Jesus asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. And he said, Lord, you know everything. Like, like Peter's taking it to a whole nother level now. It's like, Jesus, I don't even know why you're asking me because you know everything. You know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Church, if we choose to love God, we obey his commandments. And if we choose to love God and walk in, in, in relationship with God, then we feed his sheep. We take care of his lambs. That means we invest in discipleship. That means we invest in the lives of others. You can't say you love God and ignore the people around you that, that, who can benefit from everything that you know and have experienced and studied and have had revealed to you. If you love God, if you have a relationship with God, obviously, obey his commandments. And secondly, feed the sheep. And this message is, the, the, the last part of this message is us looking forward. Because if we are going to be obedient to what God has called us to do as a church, then we're going to be a church, obviously, that love one another and obey his commandments. But we are going to be a church filled with people who are all about taking care of the sheep and the lambs. We are going to invest our time. We are going to invest our energy. We are going to invest our finances. We are going to invest our building and our property in reaching the lost and discipling the sheep and the, taking care of the lambs. Amen? Amen? No more selfish living. No more worrying about me more than I worry about the people that God brings into my life. Because you know who's looking out for me? He is. He's looking out for me. And if he's looking out for me, then that means I've got a lot more time on my hands to look out for the sheep and the lambs that God has put in front of me. So I want to lay this challenge before you as we move forward in 2019. Choose to love God. First of all, let me, go, let me back up. First of all, choose to be loved by God, to receive God's love. Just soak it in every morning. When you wake up, say, God, thanks for loving me. God, thank you that, 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 that you care for me so much that you sent your son to die for me. Thank you, God, that you cared for me so much that you gave me an entire book as a love letter to me. And then say, God, you know what? I love you so much, I'm going to get in that book. Because that book is the answer for how I'm supposed to live my life. That book's going to give me everything I need to treat the people around me with love and with kindness and be patient and long-suffering and understanding and all those things. And it's in that book where I'm going to find everything I need to disciple the people you've called me to disciple. 
Next week, we have one more Choose sermon in this series. And it's called Choose to Grow. Choose to Grow. It's a choice. Church, we're not going to grow just because we sit in here on Sunday mornings and say, we want more people. We're not going to grow because we sit here on Sunday morning and said, people need to hear about Jesus. We're going to grow because we're going to choose to do the things that are going to cause growth. We're going to get out. We're going to tell people about Jesus. We're going to get out. We're going to tell people how much he loves them. We're going to tell people how much, he can, how much he's in, impacted our lives and can change their lives. We're going to do the things to choose growth. And it starts by choosing to walk in love and to love God by serving him. No more selfish living. No more selfish living, church. We've settled some big things in this past 18 months. And I believe God is is preparing to launch us forward into some great things. But I can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. Pastor Christy shared with me his, her devotion this morning. And her devotion this morning, it, it, it revolved around snow. And how that one snowflake can't do anything of significance. Because it's too small, it's too fragile. But you get enough snowflakes together, they stop traffic. They shut down cities. They bring commerce to a halt. You get enough snowflakes doing what they do, fall from the sky and land on the ground, just taking care of their job. You get enough snowflakes doing their jobs, as you will, together, it impacts communities. How many of you are tired of little snowflakes keeping your kids home? Amen. How many of you kids are tired of little snowflakes shutting down schools so you got to go to school longer into June? Anybody tired of that yet? You don't even think that far ahead. You just keep praying for snow, and then they say, another day added on, another day added on, another day added on. (laughs) But think about the snowflake and how one snowflake can't do much, two can't do much, but you get a whole bunch of snowflakes together and the impact they can make. Church, one person can, can, de- can make a difference. Two people can make a difference. But man, what if, what if 60, 70, 80 of us began to choose to do what God has called us to do, to feed the sheep, to disciple, to invest in people like never before? Man, what a difference we'll see in our community. We need to choose to be loved by God. We need to choose to love each other. And we need to choose to love God by keeping his commandment and feeding his sheep. Church, choosing love is a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a choice that has to be made every day. So what I want to do, what I want to challenge you to do is you go into your week. When you wake up in the morning, like I said, I want you to choose to just bask in God's love for you. Then I want you to pray and say, God, help me to know how to love the people around me. And then the last thing I want you to do is I want you to pray, and I want you to pray, and I want you to say, God, help me to to show my love for you by obeying your word, by feeding your sheep. When we choose love, we choose, first of all, to surrender to Christ. When we choose love, it means we surrender ourselves to serve others. And when we choose love, it means we surrender ourselves to obey God's word. So when we think about choosing love, it's pretty big stuff. It's not just flowers and balloons and cards and candy. It's life-changing choices that we make every day for ourselves and the people around us. Would you bow your heads? As we close our time this morning, I started off this sermon this morning by saying that no matter what you feel about yourself, God loves you. No matter what you think you've done that makes you unlovable, God cares about you. Enough that he sent his son to pay the price for your sin and for mine that we could have a relationship with him. And I would ask while, we're, we, while everyone's praying right now, is there anyone here that say, Pastor Ben, I'm, I'm here today and, and I, I, I want to choose to accept and receive God's love for me. 
I want to know that, that my sins are forgiven because of what Jesus did. I want to know that hev- I'm going to heaven because my, 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 the price for my sin has been paid. I choose to accept and receive God's love and surrender my life to Jesus. I want that relationship. If you're here today and that's you, would you raise your hand? Is there anyone say, that's me, Pastor Ben? I want that kind of relationship. I want to experience that kind of love. Just another moment. For the rest of us. Who's ready to choose to let God work through us in love to reach our neighbors? To bless our brothers and sisters in Christ. So that when people walk through the doors of this church, not that we're not there, church, but I'm going to tell you this right now. If we're not vigilant, it's real easy to, to, for the devil to get in and, and start causing problems. We've got to make a choice every single day to choose to walk in love. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Ben, that's me. I'm ready to walk in love like never before. I'm ready to love God like never before by obeying his word and getting involved in the feeding and the discipling and the caring for the sheep. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet right now. I want you to stand to your feet right now. As you stand to your feet, this is just you saying, God, here I am. Here I am, God, surrendering myself. I'm choosing to love my neighbor. I'm choosing to love you by serving you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus all over this room, all over this room. If that's you, just stand to your feet. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just stand to your feet all over this room as a a step of of faith, just saying, God, I'm ready for what you have for me in in the months ahead. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. If you're here today and you've got something, you want, you want, you want prayer. You're here today and you've got a need. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's just in response to, to the, that, what, I, what I just asked you to stand for. You want to come forward. You want, to, you want prayer just to say, God, here I am. Use me. Or maybe you're here today and you need prayer for something else. There's something else going on man, that you need. You just want us to agree with you in prayer for. I want to open these altars for just a couple of moments this morning, for a few minutes this morning. I want to invite you to come if you need prayer this morning. No, it doesn't matter what it is. Just come on up. And the Bible says if anyone has a need among you, let them come. We want to pray. We want to agree with you. Lay hands on you. We want to see breakthrough. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, is there anybody else? You want something? You, want to, you, need, you need help in an area? You want breakthrough in an area? For the rest of you that are, that are not here, just continue to just pray and say, God, here I am, use me. Here I am, send me. Here I am, I'm yours. Here I am. I'm going to ask those in the past that have helped us to to minister at the altar to come and and to help us to pray. To begin to agree with with our brothers and sisters in Christ, whatever their need is. Ask them what their need is. Talk to them. Find out what's going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Let's just close with this chorus together. My God is mighty to save. Hallelujah. Alexa, if you'd lead us. Jesus, you rose and conquered the grave because you loved us. And I pray, God, that every day, God, we would just rejoice in the fact that you loved us and, and reciprocate, God, with words of love and affection for who you are in our lives. God, I also pray that you would help us as a church to walk in love, that people, again, would know that we are disciples by the love we have for, for one another. And then finally, God, that you would help us, God, to show our love for you by keeping your word and feeding your sheep. God, I believe, God, that there's a season of growth because healthy things grow, and we're, we're healthy. We're healthy. And we're going to see growth. And I pray that each of us would step up to do our part in feeding and in nurturing and developing the flock as you call us to do so. God, be with us. Watch over us as we go. Thank you for your amazing provision in so many areas. And we look forward with anticipation to what's ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.